hi crafty friend it's Justine and yes I asked you if you would want a watercoloring how-to video with the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils you said yes a resounding yes actually so I'm going to give it a go and tell you a little bit about my thoughts my process of how to use these I have really enjoyed using these so far. I've made a few different cards with them. Let's show you. So if you know me, you know I love the Better Press system from Spellbinders. If you're not familiar with it, it is a letter press system that presses a metal plate into a thicker cotton based paper and I've loved watercoloring with that system. So if you're interested in knowing more about the system, check out the little tag here I have on the top corner and that shows you all about the Better Press. So if you know all about the Better Press, hello and here you go. <laughs> so here is a few different cards. This was made with the same plate and just look how drastically different these two cards are with just changing the color. Now all four of these cards I've used here were all with my watercolor pencils and I've I've been playing around with different techniques of getting some really nice shading and I've had the best luck with that with the neutral tones but as I practice I am trying to get a little bit better playing around with things layering different colors again with the shading and just really trying to work out different projects and processes, if you will. So to demonstrate today how I use the watercolor pencils, I wanted to go ahead and try out the new Spellbinders watercolor paper. This paper is very thick and high quality. I've worked with a lot of different watercolor paper in the past. Usually I'm using this one. Let's just pull it out for you so you can see. This one you can get at really any craft store. It's the Canson XL. Ooh, that is dusty. Please do not judge me. Anyway, <laughs> you can see I've used a lot of it so far. This is probably my fourth tablet since, uh, I don't know, I think I picked this first up when I was in college and took some art classes. So I've gone through a couple pads now. There's 30 sheets in here. But I'd say that this is very comparable to that, but dare I say nicer because... This paper has two different finishes, so I'll flip this over. I'm really hoping the camera picks it up, but it has a kind of a linen finish on one side that's a little bit more of a texture, and then on the other side, it's very smooth. And for a watercolor paper to work well, it needs to play nice with the water. Gotta play nice. <laughs> so I am thrilled to go ahead and try this out. With these cards that I've already done my watercoloring on, I used just the regular Better Press paper, which is a cotton-based thick paper, and the pencils worked well with them as well. So let's just try out the new watercolor paper, and I'm going to use the smooth side because I'm very intrigued by that. So uh, to get that all set up, I'm going to use my Misty, and I'm going to stamp out a little stamp, and if you know me, you know that I love snow, <laughs> and maybe you don't but I do. So I'm going to use this stamp set from Ranger and Simon Hurley, and I'm going to use this one that is this little cabin. It is just darling, and it just makes me want to go there and have a little like weekend away. So I'm going to put that right on my card base here, and let's pick a sentiment. I think I'm going to pick this one that says there's no place like home for the holidays because there really is not. Okay, right about there. That looks good to me. If you're here just for the watercolors, I suppose you could skip ahead, but just saying that card making is really awesome. So if you are interested in card making or watercoloring, I suppose you could just stay here on my channel and check out some more videos that I have. I do have some other watercoloring videos on my channel. Not a ton, but enough. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to use this Versifying Black ink to work with here. And this first project that I'm doing on camera, this will be a embossed ink card. 
my next one that I'm going to show you some other watercolor tips on will be with just a better press image and that is an archival ink so you can see kind of the differences between the two but if you're going to watercolor do not use a water based ink because it will run and you will have ink mixing with your color pencils your watercolor pencils and that's a no-no so here we go I don't have like perfect buttoned up tips and tricks for you I'm just gonna show you what I do how I use watercolor and just kind of have fun and that's really kind of all I am about with crafting is having fun trying out new things and seeing what happens so next I'm going to just add some clear embossing powder to my project and just kind of get this heat embossed I don't know where my little spoon is so I'm using my shovel super professional here okay <laughs> then I will just heat emboss this which is going to turn the powder that I just put on here into a clear plastic look it is a rather loud tool so when I turn it on I will mute the audio but you can still see the changing process. Here's my heat gun. That is always so satisfying to watch that powder melt. Okay, now let's get into the watercoloring. So if you saw my last video where I showed you my update with the better press and watercoloring, you saw that I used these. Now this is just set one and these all match the distress line so there's salvage patina pencil that i'm holding right now there's salvage patina ink and oxide so i think that is so cool how they made everything coordinate so here in this set one i have picked raspberry fired brick rusty hinge mustard seed peeled paint salvage patina speckled egg salty ocean villainous potion <laughs> funny name walnut stain black soot picket fence so the the pencils are fully the pigment so there's no wood involved which i really appreciate because i like to have a sharp pencil i was just talking to my friend um, melanie about this and the pencils come kind of dull ish but if you just pop them in a sharpener they're all set to go so this is the sharpener I recommend for literally your whole life. This is what I recommend for my kindergartners. It's the Stadler brand from Germany. These fit in perfectly. I just sharpened this one, so I'm not going to waste any pigment. Let's sharpen up the um, peeled paint one. I'm just going to pop these all in the lid because just being real frank with you, I don't like how these sit in here because I can't get them out easily. But that's just a little pet peeve of mine I guess so I just do a few twists and this is going to be nice and sharp for my project and I know some people are kind of weird about sharpening um, something like this because you're losing a lot of the pigment I'll show you how much I lost just from this one pencil I'll use this napkin here I mean that is quite a bit but I can show you on the side what we can do with that in just a minute so it just looks a little bit kind of weird it looks like I just cleaned my lawnmower but <laughs> I don't know I am nervous Minerva to film this I hope that it's not coming off too much on camera but <laughs> anyway I have been a painter I don't know kind of my whole life so I have a whole bunch of brushes this art bin box works well for mine. For this style, I think I'm going to use a brush that has a little give. So maybe this one. Maybe I will pull out a smaller one too. I might use this one. I don't know. For my brushes, I kind of have some favorites. And I have some that I really enjoy using. But sometimes... I just kind of go nuts and use some other ones so okay the ones I'm using today this is an off-brand one no name <laughs> I 
This is a Transcend 2620 number one. This is a American Painter. And that I think says 670 and this says 9740. Stable Spotter, Sri Lanka made in Sri Lanka I don't know to me just find a brush that works for you you kind of have to play around with things as you go okay well I am a clumsy crafter so whenever I do watercolor I like to use my spray bottle I know crazy but that's just what I like to do so I don't know why I sprayed that it's not time <laughs> when I'm working with a stamped image like this and watercolor pencils I like to first color on my image dry. So I'm gonna just take this peeled paint pencil and just color on my areas of where I want the watercolor to go. I will get into blending after I'm done with this project, but I will just show you how to easily use these. And as long as you can stay in the lines-ish, you should be fine. If you wanted to recreate this it doesn't take too much effort if you will or talent or practice to do this you really just want the color on the area and you'll be good to go and you can even pick something like this that has snow on it which stays white and let's see let's color the cabin I think I will use the rusty hinge I'll sharpen this up too Toward the end of this video, it might get a little weird because I'm going to show you some other interesting watercolor techniques, but I hope that it doesn't shock you too much. All right, it's getting that brown right on the front of the cabin and maybe up here as well. Some areas I'm going to leave white because I'm assuming the snow fell on it. Okay, and then let's do a red door or at least a rusty or fired brick door because I love a red door and this is kind of a Christmassy holiday card so it all goes together and then let's make the chimney kind of that red fired brick too because maybe it's a brick chimney and then <laughs> I know I've said and then a few times Anyway, we're gonna take speckled egg and that's gonna be the smoke coming out of the chimney. It's a light blue color. Very, very pretty. And that's that, okay. Next to add water. Whoops, I forgot my little pine trees in the front. To add water, I am a clumsy crafter. Just saying. So I like to use my spray bottle for adding color to small detailed watercolors like this because I don't like to have a big glass of water and have my colors get mixed in there. So I just spray it on my glass mat and just start with adding the water right over where I just colored. And the water takes this pigment and really helps it move around and just kind of come to life and that is all I'm doing to that chimney here next I'll do the trees just kind of soften up some of those little scribbly pencil lines and just kind of stay in the lines if you're someone who struggles with staying in the lines I definitely recommend doing the heat embossing technique like I did on this card because the heat embossing kind of turns that powder into a plastic and it just keeps everything where you want it and it doesn't go kind of all over. All these trees are just really coming to life and it really makes me want to get the other sets of the watercolor pencils. I think there are three sets from Ranger. I have set one. Okay, now I went a little nuts there and <laughs> not too bad, but I did get a little bit of green on my snowy roof. So I'm just going to take my clean brush that I just kind of wiped around here and just kind of push it off of that area. And it's better now. I hope that this is coming across, but 
I know that sometimes I can try to show something on YouTube and it's a little too complicated. So I'm hoping that you're following and I'm hoping that I'm showing you enough for it to make sense. If it's helping you, let me know in the comments. <laughs> okay, now that I have the front of my house all done, I'll do the door and the chimney and we'll be all set. And this is a very simple but very sweet handmade watercolor Christmas card. Oh, that is just so fun. And you can see, hopefully, how that really just kind of brought the colors to life and made this be a very sweet card. Now, I think that the Spellbinders paper really did well with the water, so I'm impressed. It didn't even show on the back, which usually I have a lot showing on the back, so that's really nice. Okay, should I add shading? My too much brain wants me to add this blue to the the steam or the smoke, and I think I'm gonna do it. Or should I do the black? Let's go crazy and do the black, but I'm gonna need my pencil to be sharp for this. This could ruin everything, so <laughs> just stay tuned. And this is already pretty dry, which is nice. I like to go with a dry paper watercolor and then add my color to it, but People can do it the other way as well. I'll show you in just a little bit the other way. Yeah, I think a gray smoke makes more sense than that speckled egg. Oh, that is just so darling. Don't you want to go there? I do. Okay. Let's show you a little bit of some watercolor techniques. Oh. First of all, let's use these little shavings that I created here, and let's just get weird with the water. So what we can do, what I can do, is take a bigger brush like this, get it wet. Oh, perfect, it wasn't clean in the first place. <laughs> Surprise, well, now I'm cleaning it. Okay, I think I'm just gonna get a different brush because I don't feel like cleaning that perfectly. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna use a thicker brush. This one is a number six Transon. I feel like I said six from the other one. Nope, this was a number one, so. And just get it wet. And I'm gonna put down a little water. Looks like there was some gray in there, but a little water there. And then just take my wet brush, pounce it on here, and just see what happens. So to me, that definitely makes a nice pigment. What I would do with this, I don't know how in the world I would store it, but from my pencil shavings, I would take these and use them for backgrounds because this would make a really nice background for maybe better pressing or painting. I think that this is a great way to use that waste, if you will, from the sharpening of the pencils. So that is really, interesting so I'm glad that I tried that out now I learned maybe you learned maybe not I don't know <laughs> but I will show you some other kind of blending techniques now so let's let's get into that because I feel like that's probably why you're here unless you're here to watch me stamp and do the card making but if you're here for just watercolor pencil tips here we are so for blending let's see let's blend pink and purple because those are some pretty colors I'm gonna start dry. I'm not even gonna bother to sharpen this. Just go from a pretty pigmented area to a lighter area like this. And then I'm gonna bring in some purple and we'll meet in the middle. Here's the purple, pretty pigmented. And we'll just blend it out, I guess, like that. This is the Villainous Poison and Picked Raspberry, which I used to call Pickled Raspberry. If you know, you know. Okay, I'm just going to get some of that green out of my brush here and move along. Okay, then with a wet brush, like so, 
I'm going to start from the light side and go toward the pigmented area and just do little circles like so and that is my pink. Do the same thing with my purple. Do little circles and go into my purple, that dark area. I like to go from light to dark just because I like the technique that that gives off that it kind of erases all those little pencil lines and blends it together nicely. So if I were to kind of pull some of this this way and pull some of this this way, it kind of blends in the middle there a little bit. Okay, but for like, let's say we had a flower to color. Let's just draw a little flower petal here. Okay, and maybe we'll do a leaf. Maybe those were stamped. Fun fact about color pencils is you can erase pencil underneath them. So let's just do this flower petal. So we'll use pink again because, no, let's use blue just for fun. Okay, so if I'm going to do a flower petal, I want my darker spot to be toward the center of the flower, and I'm going to go from dark to light. So I'm going to really layer on the color on the base of the petal like this and kind of bring some of it up there a little bit, but really have that dark area on the bottom. Maybe we'll bring in some of this one again. This is salvage patina and just kind of bring that through the middle as we transfer up to the top of the flower. Then with my brush, I'm going to take clean water and really saturate it and start from the up on the top here and work my way down like this, staying in my pencil lines and just kind of flooding that area, going from the top down. Like that. And then when that dries, this petal really looks pretty. And now I just did what I said I would not do in my head, but when you take I'll show you the difference here. When you take the color from the bottom and you go up, that moves the pigment up and you lose some of that shading. So you can see if you want to just fill it in like that, it doesn't look as nice to me. So I'm going to do it again over here. And we're just going to do without pencil lines this time. And I'll show you how we can make that petal kind of blend without going from the dark to the light, but go from the white to the dark. So we have the top here, kind of make the petal shape. And wiggle, 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 get that pigment going and go down. If I kind of flick up, that's where that pigment is going to start coming into that top. So if I'm going to do it, I have to be kind of careful. Wow, this watercolor paper is really nice. Anyway, so that's kind of how I shade with water. And then let's do this leaf. And I will attempt to not use my too much brain and go to the dark too much and just keep it nice and light. Let's pull out some mustard seed as well on this leaf and get some fall color blend happening. And that is quite a lot of color, so I think we are all set to go here. Get some water. Now, the yellow is darker than the green, so I'm always working light to dark here. some of that green in there. If 
There we go. My too much brain wants to mix it, but I'm just going to let the paint do its, or the watercolor pencil do its own thing here. Again, I just, I want to touch that little area where it blends, but I'm just going to leave it. You can see here how this blended just with those two colors. So there is kind of a method to the madness, if you will. But if you're looking for a simple way to color, this is a really nice way to color a stamp. Okay, let's go to a better pressed image because I feel like my too much brain is overthinking all of this. <laughs> so let's do this sweet little bird. I love this bird. I have better pressed with this bird a few different times now and I really just enjoy it. So let's pull it out again. I'll let this sit here so you can kind of see the process. But again, I'm going to do the same process here as I did with the embossed stamped image. I'm going to color it and add water after. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this one. This is the green peeled paint one, which is kind of funny because our house is like this color on the outside, which I call um, <laughs> split pea soup green. I don't love it, but you know what? I have a house and it's warm and it keeps me safe, so I love it for that. But the color is quite interesting. So there's the leaves getting colored again you just have to kind of put it where you want but where you have to be careful is when you're adding water especially when I do his little leg here and this branch I just have to be cautious of where the water is going and with this paper it seems to dry really fast especially for a little bit of water so I think it will be just fine and it won't kind of seep in together Oh, that is just so cute. Okay. Um, because I feel like someone might ask, why do you color first and then put water after? So I just wanted to show you here. So I just did it here off camera, on camera, off of camera. And as I was kind of just playing around here, but here, this is why. So let's get the area wet. Okay, that's all wet. Then let's take my watercolor pencil and go over it. It sometimes is okay but do you see how there's little pills from the paper coming up those are the fibers from the paper coming up and those will keep the color and hold it instead of having a nice smooth blend like these this is not going to blend nicely either plus you can see some pencil lines here I think for our bird I'm gonna go for kind of the the brown bird slash robin look Maybe, so I'm just gonna add this rusty hinge color to the body. And the Better Press image is kinda nice because it kind of does the shading for me a little bit with some of these cross edges, etches on the belly and some of the darker areas. But just to oomph it up a little, I am gonna add some of this fired brick to the belly and the darker areas. and just a tiny bit of the yellow to the beak. It really won't show, but whatever. And I did just break, just break this, which is making my heart so sad. Ugh. I'm gonna have to get over it. But just like I tell my kindergartners, broken crayons still color. So I'm just gonna have to take some of my own advice and go ahead and work with this broken piece. <laughs> If you know me, you know that this is really bothering me, but the show must go on. All right, we're gonna make the branch kind of a black green. I'm gonna color it with the green mainly and just add a little bit of the black. Mm, maybe I'll do the brown. I just want it to stand out a little bit from the bird because I do only have one set and I think that the set would kind of it kind of blends with the bird I don't know all right now the fired brick again for the berries try to brighten those up a little and then the little top hat on this really cute bird I'm gonna do it just black and I don't want it to be solid so I'm just gonna maybe make it kind of gray with my pencils then for his cute little scarf I'm gonna use the speckled egg keep him a classy little birdie and just go from there. 
All right, it's water time, people. Let's add the water and we'll hope for the best, per the huge. <laughs> okay, let's do the bird body first because that has the shading and blending. So if you're here for that, you can see, I'm just gonna activate some of that red and get the wing and just kind of get rid of some of those little pencil lines if there are any there. And that is a really fast way to color a bigger stamped image like this. So I'm digging it. Go in with some of that red. Let's do the branch next. And then I'll do the leaves and get to the feet last. So the branch has a chance to dry. Yes. And then the little leaves of the tree or bush. If you're still watching at this point of the video, comment below um, the name of my um, last collection I just put out with Spellbinders in September, Game Day. So comment Game Day in the description if you are still watching at this point of the video. Because I don't know if people are really going to watch all of this. I am not a professional colorist or watercolorist, but I am enjoying trying stuff out and you asked me to show you my technique, so here I am showing it to you. So I hope that you're watching. <laughs> if not, oh well. I'm enjoying this video and I don't know, maybe one or two people will watch the whole thing. Okay. Now I think my little birdie's all set, so there you have it. <laughs> Another phrase I use a lot. Let's go back to my petals and just check out the petals and the leaves. The leaf is a little wet still. The petal is as well, but I really enjoyed just trying this out. It was not a waste of this paper. Number one, because I figured out I can use my waste products of my sharpening for backgrounds. I showed you how to blend two colors together in a large space like this and in a small space for petals with lines without and then blending two different colors using the wet technique. Then I also showed you stamping with watercolor pencils. I showed you better pressing and I showed you four other projects that I made with these pencils. So I really hope that I've shown you something and you've learned something. If you have, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're thinking and if you want more content I guess around watercolor let me know I know this video has been a long one let's see how long is this now oh only 35 minutes I guess that's not too bad so anyway let me know in the comments if you want more watercolor I guess I can do it if people want it so anyway happy Thanksgiving uh, I think this is going out Thanksgiving weekend so if you celebrate Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving and if um, you don't. Happy Saturday. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.